is Soda Time TV, and today we have with us Jeff Danovich, who is a pilot, uh, community activist, a fireman, uh, volunteer in the community, and possibly a CIA spook. We're not entirely sure about that. <laughs> he is also the owner and creator of Escape Rooms by Frank Nicky, and that's kind of what we're going to talk about today, his business. So, uh, well, first, we're going to try a Hank's root beer. Jeff has actually been coming into the shop basically ever since we opened, and he always gets a frosty I do. root beer. Frosty. We are all out of that right now, and I'm forcing him to try this Hank's root beer. So let's see what this all is. All right. Like. Not bad, but it's just not a frosty. I don't know. That's pretty good. It is. It tastes very similar to a frosty, I think. It is. You do You do have that. You have hit that. This, uh, this is made in Philadelphia, incidentally, if you care. I don't know. I care. But it is good. A little creamy. Got a lot of fizz. It is. It is very creamy good stuff. You are correct. So, uh, back to your escape rooms. What, in case people don't know, what is an escape room? Because you've been doing this how long in Sandusky now? Uh, this is our third year. Third, third, third year. year. So probably there's still a lot of people in the community that don't know you're there. I'm going to have to say probably about 80% of our customers have never done an escape room before. Wow, that's surprising. How long has escape rooms been going on? Um, in so general. in general, uh, pro approximately 2007, um, a guy developed them in Japan. Um, they were based on games like Myst and stuff that you played as a kid. Someone said, let's make this live action. Now we fast forward to approximately 2012 when the first one came to the United States in San Francisco. We played our first one in New York in 2014. And then 2000, end of 2015, I actually approached you because you had a, a space that we were thinking about using. We wanted to test the market. Uh, we put it in your back room in 2016. It took off very well. And then yep. from there we had to expand and we moved out. Yeah. So uh, like, what do you like about, like being the owner of the escape room and kind of puts you in charge? What, what do you, do you like the creating of the puzzles? Sure. Working with the people? Sure, I like, uh, I like to create the puzzles. I like to create your storyline. So basically what you're doing is you are creating a uh, a script for like a play and then you have um, basically like right here we have a flow chart and this flow chart has all the different games and puzzles and what everything goes to so what you're doing is you're trying to the people are that's playing a, a light that's a top, top secret that's a top secret right? okay. we're gonna have to, have to, have to, have to kill, out. You. Have to kill <laughs> you after this uh, no so basically you write the script uh, people come and you're just trying to maneuver them through the game and keep everything flowing yeah, yeah, people I know that have done yours, they really like them. And uh, you have, where are you located, just so they know? Sure, we are located at the historical Hubbard House at uh, 134 East Adams Street. Okay, and that's across the street from Fallon House? Across the street from the Fallon House, or Jackson Junior High right there. Gotcha. And you have a couple different rooms in there, and a couple different experiences and kind of things for people, right? Correct. Our oldest game right now that's still in there, and it's our most popular game, by, by the way, is called Trapped in the 80s. Um, it's basically you're going back into the 80s and there's a lot of stuff that you're um, that brings you back to the 80s luckily my parents never throw anything out so I had a lot of stuff I can uh, reference back beer can, a lot of your old toys back yes there. beer can collection uh, rigid tool poster stuff like that uh, old Kodak cameras our next game the little, is, the little rectangle the, one. yeah the little rectangle yeah. one I have that that's one of our props in there then um, our next game is our outdoor game which takes the people through the streets of Sandusky and for that game, we have a wooden booklet. And on the wooden booklet, you have locks. And as you unlock it, it takes you through the game. Uh, this takes you through this the streets. It's a pretty nifty piece of equipment right here. Yes, so when we were researching, uh, well, I'm gonna get to that, Chad. Right. When we were researching um, our game, our latest game, uh, Tesla Electric Messiah, it took us to uh, Zagreb, it took us to Croatia. So while we were there in Croatia, in Zagreb, we played this game worked with the company, we bought the booklet off of them, but we still had to design the puzzles and des design the game itself. Um, we also took a game from New York City that we played called Accomplice the Show, which uses live actors, wouldn't be cost effective, so we use augmented reality to tell the story of six characters that lived throughout the city of Sandusky, uh, and that was designed for the Bicentennial last year. Ah, cool. So that's our outdoor game, Unlock Sandusky. And our latest game is called Tesla Electric Messiah based on Nikola Tesla, the scientist. All right. So, um, 
and you said which one's most popular, the 80s? Yes, Trapped in the 80s is uh, most popular, but Gaining is our Tesla room. Cool. Um, let me ask you this. So sure. you get all kinds of people. You get people from all over. We do. Tourists and whatnot. Have you ever had somebody come through that uh, was just like some sort of IQ Jeopardy genius <laughs> that just crushed your games and you thought to yourself, gosh, I've made this too easy? Yeah, that's so that's a challenge. You want to make it hard, but not too hard for the average person. The people that have crushed our games are people that have done multiple rooms. My wife and I, we've done approximately 50 rooms throughout the United States. And uh, like I said, out, outside of the United States, um, we've had people that come through that have done like maybe 100 rooms. Oh, wow. And you kind of get into a flow. A lot of our stuff is, uh, we design everything ourselves. So there's gonna be stuff that you don't see in our room that you haven't seen in other rooms. For instance, we designed a, uh, a sonar lock. It's based on so sonar technology, and you have to move the piece into four different specific locations in order to unlock that lock, and it's based off of sonar. So, but so sending out those signals. Yes, yeah, all those signals. But as you start playing games, you start thinking outside the box, and you're like, okay, why is this piece here? What does this lead lead me to? Right, right. So on the flip side of that. You ever have some people come through that you're you just wonder how they get through life, much <laughs> less this escape room, and they just totally <laughs> botch it? Well, yeah, we do get that, and then we have to remind them that it's easy for us to do because we design the game, so we know. And then we tell them that you know we still fail games here and there, but you know yeah, you got to make them feel better. A we bit. we do. We have to make them feel better. So what we'll do is we may give a few extra clues if you ask. We don't want to give out a participation award per se, but we want to make sure that you have a fun experience. So we kind of were able to judge people now that the games have been running for a while. Cool. All right, so you have been, like you say, to a lot of different ones. And yes. you've designed your own puzzles and probably always thinking of different things. Sure. What is the, the coolest thing you've seen out there, the coolest puzzle or the coolest room? Um, I'm gonna have to say by far, the, the best ones for some reason seem to be in Louisiana. So 13th Gate in Baton Rouge is basically the set of Goonies. If you've ever seen the movie Goonies. Uh, Who hasn't? Yes, it hasn't. So that is the set of Goonies. Uh, if you've done escape rooms, that is the top escape room do in, they, in the do world. Do they fill it with water? Up no, they, they don't. They do have water. I'll, I'll give you that. They do have water inside of it. So they, this must be like a... It's huge. It's, it's a huge... Giant warehouse? Giant warehouse that they do it. And then if you move over to our friends in uh, New Orleans, Clue Carey, they base a lot of their puzzles on stuff that has to do with the history, and they do those really well there too. So, there's some ghosts and things in there. Uh, they have some stuff on Voodoo. Oh, so. yeah. oh yeah, oh yeah, oh <laughs> yeah. You gotta be careful with that. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, all right, so you're also a fireman. Yes. You ever had to drag anybody out of a burning building? I, I have. For but a real for, life for, for situation? Real. Yeah, but that was years ago. So now I've been I've been there when I was younger. I've been there 29 years. So I they, we got a lot of younger guys that can do they that. They do now. all the pulling out. Yeah, of the they, they do all that stuff now. So yeah, it's been a few. It's been I don't know 20 years since I've done something like that. Oh, so wow. yeah. So we, do we have a lot of fires in Sandusky? Oh, we do. Um, so the city of Sandusky, we are probably one of the busiest departments between the city of Cleveland and Toledo. And a lot of that has to do because we run ambulance service. So okay. we're a dual threat. So dual threat. Dual threat, yes. Dual threat. Yes, that's us. Saving people community. Exactly. All right, so I think you have a couple uh, different locks or gadgets over here. I do. So what I wanted to do was show, so our locks can vary from a bunch of different things. It could be something as simple as we had earlier, numbers on the lock uh, to, a little bit more complicated would be a lock like this. This is a directional lock that uses colors and it has four different directions it can go into. So that could be a code. How do you? So you oh, just push okay. up, push up, down, left, Slides right, up, and down. then open. So it'd be like, so this is like a, a Xbox, up, up, left, right, down. Exactly, like something. That. That's where Escape Games all started at was on, in the video. Then we have this lock that's out of India. This is currently in our Tesla room. It uses three keys to unlock it, but as you can see, it's hard to even see where do you start the first key at. Yeah, there are no keyholes on this thing. No, there are no keyholes. And this, again, is a serious piece of equipment. That is a serious piece of equipment. <laughs> well, all right, there's no keyholes, but these are, don't go in either. They go, they, they go can somewhere. go on somehow, yes. but then you got the string situation. All right, so I would fail this probably. Maybe. No, after a while, I think you would have figured it out. So everyone kind of figures out that sets. One of our cool locks. And then, like I said, uh, there'll be locks that we designed. So one that we used to have when we were in your back room that we retired was a uh, knock-knock lock. So you would get led to 
a clue would lead you to. And the clue was um, a picture of a barber shop. And then it says, uh, shave and a haircut two bits. And everyone's like, well, I don't really know what a shave and a haircut two bits is. But you it's do. It's a quarter, right? Well, no, it is. But basically, if you would have done something like, if you tap that out, that would unlock a drawer. So that's a tip. That's another type of lock. Long How does that work? Does it work on sound? It works it work on, on sound. So there's, uh, we use Arduino code to, um, Arduino code. Yeah, Arduino code. Because uh, everybody knows what's Arduino Never Raspberry Pi. Yeah, I, I never, I never knew what it was until I started doing like skate and started teaching with YouTube. If you, all you have to do is go yeah. YouTube. You go to YouTube, they'll help you, you with that. Find anything. You out can there. find yes. anything out there. Yeah. So awesome. All right. So give us uh, in 60 seconds, sort of your sales pitch of you know, give us your website, your phone number, how somebody can set this up. Sure. Nine yards. Okay, so if you want to do one of our escape rooms, uh, everything is done online. You go to our website, which is uh, franknicky.com. That's F-R-A-N-K-Y-N-I-C-K-Y.com. Uh, you can do your booking on there. Uh, you want to do it if you want to be challenged, if you want to have bragging rights with your friends, you want to challenge your friends. We get everything from yesterday we had a bachelorette party, we've had uh, bachelor parties, birthday parties, or just friends coming out for the weekend or out for the night to do something. Yeah, great. Um, what's, what is, who is Frank Nicky? Frank Nicky is a combination of me and another fireman when we owned a hot dog stand, oh my god, 15 years ago. So we oh, just man. kept, we used that name because it was unique. Oh, so that's it. There you go. I, I thought I had some blue shirt home. No, 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 no. That's it. All right. So uh, at the end of these little uh, little shows, we always interviews. We always do a little game. Okay. So we're gonna play a little game. Just <laughs> this and this or that. So these all have to deal with uh, detectives, yeah, sure. crime solvers, investigators. Charlie Chan. No. Okay. <laughs> Should have brought him up. <laughs> Kojak or Columbo? Uh, I'm gonna go with Columbo. You remember both those guys? Yes, I do. Kelly Savalas, he was in Kelly's Heroes. Yeah. And then now we have, um, I just said his name, he, uh, Peter, Peter Paul, Batman Man of the World. He was Captain Dragon. See? People, you know what I'm still alive? Nope, they're both dead. Both dead. Both dead. All right, Inspector Gadget or the Scooby Doo Gang? Oh, man. I want to say Inspector Gadget because of uh, Don, um, oh, I can't think of his name now. It's not Don, it's, it's uh, Don. You know what I'm talking about? Inspector Gadget. from Get Smart. He was from Get Smart. He was the voice of Inspector Gadget, the original Inspector Gadget. Don Adams. Yes. So I want to say that, but Scooby Doo. Say Scooby Doo was fun. Really? Metal one? Metal one. Ooh. Be worth some money today. You still got that in the room? No, I actually think you might have bought it from me. No? No? I did not. I swear I saw it at a garage sale. <laughs> well, we lived down the street. We'll walk or something. I know. Well, we lived down the street for me. Darn it. Crockett Tubs or Mulder and Scully? Oh, Crockett and Tubbs, 80s classic. Boom. Batman or Sherlock Holmes? Sherlock Holmes. Because Batman. Skate room. Well, Batman, Batman yeah, he's Batman. the world's greatest detective. That's what it is. It does say that, but no that. one knows him as that. They know him as pretty much a superhero. Yeah. So, kick him butt. There you go. All right. Magnum P.I. or Jim Rockford? Rockford. Rockford Files. Rockford Files, yeah. That's a good one. There you go. Uh, James Bond or Ethan Hunt? James Bond, James Bond. What if they What if they do this female James Bond? I know, I know. This is not. I don't know. Just I'm pretty much against the classic guy. So yeah, yeah. I want to. What see What James Bond do you think is the best? You know what? I actually, to me, it's going to be Sean Connery. Yeah, yeah. Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. Even never say never again. The new one. The newer one. Was right after he retired for a while. After Roger Moore was out. So yes. All right. Thanks for coming along. All right. Thanks for being on the show. Probably. Uh, like us on Facebook, share us on Facebook, and if you get a chance, go visit Jeff Danovich at Escape Room by Frank Nicky. You'll have a good time. Thank you. Thank you.